to worship on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm glad you're joining us for worship. And if you are new visiting our Facebook page, we welcome you to worship this morning at McFarland Lutheran Church. We are adding a drive-in worship service to our Sunday morning schedule, and that will start next week, next Sunday at 9 a.m. You're invited to park in the back parking lot by the CLM doors, and the service will be broadcast through the, your FM radio so you can stay safe in your car. And more information and details about the service can be found in the weekly e-news that is sent out. This is in addition to the service that we host here in the sanctuary on Facebook at 10 a.m. And that the recording from this service will be posted to the website later in the day as it is currently happening. So you can join us from your car in the back parking lot at 9 a.m. Or you can join us from your living room couch at 10 a.m. or any time later in the day. And again, this will be starting next week, September 6th. And with the start of a new school year, it marks the start of a new programmatic year in the church. MLC will have faith formation opportunities for disciples of all ages, and they will look different this year from previous years. We will have a highlight of those ministry opportunities on our remote rally day, and that will be September 13th at the beginning of the 10 a.m. worship service. So remote rally day in two weeks at the beginning of this 10 a.m. service. And a flyer with all of those opportunities will also be mailed out to all members, and so keep an eye on um, keep an eye on your mailbox for that. Yesterday, our synod elected a new bishop, Joy Mortensen Weeby. Thanks be to God for the interim bishop Peter Rognes for his leadership during this transition, and we look forward to Pastor Joy's installation to the office of bishop in October, and for her to share her gifts with uh, for ministry with us and with our synod. Thanks be to God. And last, it is heavy on our hearts what's happening in our neighboring town of Kenosha. The shooting of Jacob Blake and the pain, fear, anger, and chaos that has unfolded since. The Bishop of the Greater Milwaukee Synod, Paul Erickson, sent a letter out to the congregations of that synod, of which Kenosha is a part. I won't read the whole letter, though, and it is beautiful, but I would like to highlight one piece for us this morning. So I quote from Bishop Erickson. We have a long road ahead of us, as a church and as a society, to rebuild the trust that has been broken and to create systems that bring us together in ways that honor the dignity and beauty of each and every person. Regardless of which pandemic or challenge we are confronting, we need to listen to each other. We need to work together. And more than anything else, we need to call upon the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to free us from our fears that we might step forward in faith, trusting that God has not brought us this far to abandon us now. So pray with me, dear church, weep with me, and then walk with me into the future that God is preparing for us now. Thank you, Bishop Erickson. We will be keeping Jacob Blake and the city of Kenosha in our prayers later during the service, and we invite that you keep them in your prayers as well. We will continue our service with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
please join in singing our gathering song, number 879. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15. This passage describes how hard it is to be a prophet proclaiming the word of God. It's like a heavy weight, Jeremiah says. And in this reading, Jeremiah laments, but then hears God's response. And now the reading. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. 
Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be heal, healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels and the glory of the Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel is the second half of a scene with Jesus and Peter when they are in Caesarea Philippi. Last week, Peter nails it when he confesses Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus calls Peter a rock for his confession of faith. Peter gets it so right, and then he gets it so wrong. Peter goes from the rock to the stumbling block. As he tries to con convince Jesus that all of his talk about suffering, execution, and being raised on the third day, you know, Jesus, that's really not what the Messiah should be doing. The exchange turns sharply at that moment when Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. The rock has turned into a demonic block. But notice that Jesus doesn't tell Peter to go away and never come back. Or, Peter, just get lost. I don't want to see you anymore. What he tells him is literally, go behind me. Or, follow behind me. Biblical scholar Audrey West notes that these words are discipleship words. The proper place for Peter for any disciple, is behind Jesus, following, not in front, not away from, but close behind. Then Jesus uses these same words for any other disciple, including you and me, to go behind him. If any want to become my followers, he uses the exact same words as he does to Peter. 
if any want to go behind me, deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. Jesus offers challenging words of discipleship to us today. Deny yourselves, take up your cross, and go behind me. Often these words have been misused to keep people down, or submissive, or complacent in the face of oppression or abusive relationships. They have been wielded like a club to keep people from speaking out against injustice. Yet I see them as a call to trust Jesus, to go behind him and be faithful to the kingdom of love and mercy and justice that Jesus preached and lived for and died for. It is to line ourselves up behind Jesus and that gospel. David Lowe's writes that the cross was not Jesus' goal. He didn't set out to be crucified, but rather it was the outcome of his faithfulness to God's kingdom. He didn't choose the cross, but rather trusted God to work through the extreme pain and agony of the cross for the sake of the world, which God loves so much. Similarly, the cross isn't something that we choose. The cross is something that finds us. So taking up your cross does not mean that we set out to achieve martyrdom or that we become passive in the face of evil or injustice. Rather, taking up our cross is getting behind Jesus and letting him and the Holy Spirit work through us to share God's love. It is to trust that God works through us even in extreme conditions, so that the love of God becomes clear. And when we suffer, when we suffer because of our discipleship actions and decisions, we trust that God continues to be with us and give us life. Christ himself continues to be with us. It has been a week. The cross of Jesus' suffering has found us again. The tragic sin of racism has broken out again in Kenosha, just a hundred miles east of here. A black man, Jacob Blake, was shot seven times in the back by a white police officer. Jacob is now fighting for his life. Once again, nonviolent protests have turned into looting and chaos. And disturbingly, a 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse has been arrested in conjunction with two shooting deaths of protesters as part of a white armed militia. How can we not weep? How can we not weep as we have wept so many times over George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others? My heart is broken over this suffering, and I am distressed over the trauma of tragic racial injustice, and rising violence during this highly anxious time in our world. Dear friends, we need to pray together for Jacob and his family, for police officers and elected leaders in Kenosha, our state and our country, and for all of us 
as we walk through what unfortunately and tragically feels so familiar. Suffering has found us. The cross has found us. This is our cross right now. The wounds of racism and injustice, these are crosses that we carry, not just in Kenosha, but in McFarland, Madison, and Dane County. And in this suffering, we desperately need the promise that Christ himself, his own wounded hands, his own wounded side, that he meets us in our wounds with healing and love. We need the promise of this gospel today. As we walk through this firestorm of racial injustice, the ongoing struggles with COVID, the fears as we begin a new school year, and other storms in our lives. I heard the words of hope from two voices this week. The first is Jacob Blake's mother, Julia Jackson. I cannot imagine the pain she is going through. Yet in the midst of her tears and grief, she spoke with amazing courage at a press conference. She said that property destruction does not reflect her son or their family or their values or their hopes for the city of Kenosha. And then she said, so I am really asking and encouraging everyone in Wisconsin and abroad to take a moment and examine your hearts. We need healing. As I pray for my son's healing, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I also have been praying even before this for the healing of our country. God has placed each and every one of us in this country because he wanted us to be here. We are all humans. No one is superior to another human being. Watch her testimony. Look it up on YouTube. Look it up on Google. And watch her proclamation. It is powerful. Her moving words encourage us to get behind Jesus. To work for his healing and equality for black lives. For every human life. We are all created in God's image, and we have got work to do to make this truth a reality. The second testimony of hope for me this week are the words of civil rights activist John Lewis, who died in July. He wrote these words shortly before he died. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence, is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. Lewis's words also remind us and encourage us to get behind Jesus to walk behind him. The way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence, the way of freedom. For I believe Jesus is still the most excellent way. It is time to examine our hearts, dear friends, to pray, to take actions that reflect the healing, freedom, and nonviolent love of Jesus. To align ourselves behind the one we follow. Dear friends, in the midst of everything going on, 
every weight of the world, in this heavy atmosphere of hate and fear, we are called to trust Jesus by lining up behind him and following him. And know, dear beloved people of God, that when we experience the suffering, we will also know the presence of the one who is with us. He endured the worst, the cross, and was raised to give us and this world a new way to live together. He is the one who holds us today as we weep, as we lament, as we strive for justice, as we suffer bitter tears. He is the one who holds us so that we can have courage to keep following, keep encouraging one another with hope, and keep loving neighbors in his name. The love of Christ in his cross and resurrection still is the most excellent way. Let us line up behind him and walk in his way of love. Amen. Tim, and now please join us in singing together our song of the day, All the Way My Savior Leads Me.
Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. We pray especially for Jacob Blake, his family, and the leaders in the city of Kenosha, and for all those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us an everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. On behalf of the worship leaders gathered here, we wish you God's peace. And I invite you to text, call, comment, email, send um, the God's peace in other ways. Let's give a word of thanksgiving for God's word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. 
freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our sending song, number 624, Jesus Still Lead On. Thanks be to God.